Hey everybody, this is Graham Elwood. I wanted to tell you that this conversation between Lee Camp and myself was recorded on Wednesday, July 1st, 2020, one day before Jaleen Maxwell was arrested by the FBI. Just want to give you a heads up, all the conversation we have at the end of the podcast about her and Epstein was made before she was just arrested. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the show. I want to tell the audience, this is a, um, uh, Lee actually came up with this idea of like, let's do a podcast that, that, you know, it's just he and I talking, being co-host rather than me interviewing him or him interviewing me for his show. And we were kind of both, we were talking about like, how can we get this done? Because we both are very busy and setting separate a separate hour out of the week. I don't know. It's a, it's a lot. So I was just like, let's. Graham, Graham has to surf at least seven hours a day. So that sucks <laughs> up a big. It does. Uh, and I was surfing earlier today and it was fucking righteous. I mean, the waves were <laughs> glassy. Um, and um, yeah, surfing is a very important part of my life, Lee. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we, we thought. Um, you know, let's do it during one of my live streams and we'll make it its own segment. And rather than like me, you know, interview Lee for Political Vigilante, we're going to just do this podcast during my live, uh, my Political Vigilante live stream. But we're going to then pull the audio from this and release it as a separate podcast. And the title of it is Lee. Government Secrets with Lee Kent and Graham Elwood. Oh, welcome to episode one of Government <laughs> Secrets. Uh, and we will definitely promise, we make a promise to the audience, we will decide by episode two whether we want to keep doing this. <laughs> it might be it might be a real limited run. We might go, ah, eh, this is dumb, or I hated it, or the audience doesn't care, or whatever. Or, you know, I I you know, I need to do more surfing. Whatever it is. Whatever. Yeah, so so for those of you watching this uh, uh, this pilot episode, uh, let Graham know if you hate this or not. <laughs> In the live stream, just bright love or hate. Um, so it's it's episode one of Government Secrets, and we thought, uh, you know, it's politics, but also you know we're two we're two jack wagon comedians, so <laughs> we thought we would each sort of introduce a couple of stories that maybe the other guy isn't that aware of and then just kind of go from there. Um, and we'll see how it takes. We'll see, we'll see what we like. Maybe we can, that's the beautiful thing about a podcast. We can tweak it. We can, you know, make it four minutes long. We can make it whatever we can do. We can do I, I, yeah, I view it as a battle for the, I'd say the first month will be a battle to see who is the sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> sidekick death match. Maybe that's what yeah. we should call the show, a sidekick yeah. death match. Yeah, this is this is UFC, UFC to see who can get the stranglehold first. <laughs> who can? Yeah, that's the thing. Oh man, it's how this is going to be brutal. No one wants to get relocated <laughs> to sidekick. Man, that's a that's that's a tough that's a tough go. Um, so before we get into it, Lee, I don't know what's been going on in your world. Any uh, anything exciting? Uh God, no. No, that's the thing about quarantining, right? There is nothing happening in your life. You, mm -hmm. I just keep doing the show and everything. So there's crazy shit going on in the world. But uh, in my life, no, no, nothing. I did. I saw a rather large ant in the apartment. So there was that. <laughs> Were you were the small ones, but this guy had some heft. He actually took the couch with him, which pissed me off. Oh my god! Were you worried he was carrying COVID nineteen? <laughs> yes, he did have on a mask, which I don't know if that's better or worse. But. <laughs> well, at least he was like you know practicing social distancing and wearing a mask. He's not a dick ant, you know. Right, right. He's not. He's not. He's not a dick. Yeah, that, that is, <laughs> that's very true. It's all the ants watching out there. Don't be dicks. You know what I mean? I, let, let's actually start with uh, with your analysis of the mask culture, because. Here's the thing is I, I, I do the mask, especially when I'm in, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in grocery stores and stuff like that. Or even if I know I'll be walking near a lot of people like at protests and things like that. But I don't feel the need to, there's really no point to it when you're walking on a sidewalk completely, you know, DC is not in parts of DC are not that pop heavily populated. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
I can walk around. And yet people on the other side of the road, when I'm alone on a sidewalk, will look at me like, oh, fucking MAGA hat wearing <laughs> douchebag. Because I don't have a mask on alone in a field. Like there's no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you walking through a lot of fields over there in D.C.? <laughs> Well, like you can go, I'll go running and not be near anyone. Oh, right. But they, right. It's like you can't, you you can't run with a goddamn mask on. You're like you're 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 breathing your own carbon dioxide. I yeah. mean, it, this is survival of the fittest, isn't it? Yeah. No, it's it's an excellent point. I mean, I don't wear one because um, it's my God given right. And uh, I, <laughs> I think my AR-15 and my MAGA hat will protect me from COVID-19. So I'm fair, feel very safe in that regard. No, I um. You know, I'm very like I've been every time I go to the store, any enclosed space, I I, I wear the mask. Uh, I, I the, the more, since more research has come out to say that it's harder for COVID to, um, you know, get for somebody to give it to somebody and and in the outdoors, right? It seems like it's all all enclosed spaces is where it gets bad. So enclosed in like face to face and stuff. So it's, I mean, the, apparently around the protest, there has not been an uptick in like areas that had protests mm -hmm. unless it's see and, and the contract contact tracing has shown that it, it doesn't people aren't getting it from the protest. And the reason I think is a you're outdoors. B most people are wearing masks, uh, mm -hmm. probably just to stop from facial recognition surveillance, <laughs> but, uh, and then everyone's kind of largely facing the same direction. So you're not talking into people's faces. And so, People aren't getting it, despite the fact you have tens of thousands of people together at a protest. Well, that was such compelling evidence that there that there wasn't this uptick. That was that week, you know, which was a month ago. I was like that week of protests, and I went to several. I was like, well, we'll see if everybody at the protest gets it. Then we know, oh man. But it's not. The uptick is coming we from know bars. It hates black people. <laughs> That's what we've all learned. <laughs> so, <laughs> which is good. Yeah, we need that data. Um, so yeah, so it's really like it's it's the upticks is are coming from like restaurants and bars and people just not wearing it. So like when I go outside, I typically wear it if I'm walking down the street. Um I I wear it when I ride my bike and I got this special filter for bike riding that has valves and a filter so you're not breathing in your own um Do you look like Bane from Batman? Take control, take control of your bike ride. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Which is my goal. Ultimately, uh, I do want to be in charge of the League of Shadows, but that's probably a separate issue, a separate podcast. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, I mean, I wear it, but I got this mask specifically, you know, for that. And, and I mean, some, it has a filter and it's like even, the, I think it might even been designed for like people in Beijing or whatever because of the exhaust or, or you know, like bike messengers in big cities or something right. like that. They've been living with masks on for years now. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, when I'm walking, just walking down in my neighborhood, I'll, I'll have it on or I won't until I see people come near me, then I'll put it on or something like that. Um, but I don't know. That's, yeah. I mean, I just I'm just trying to go off of as much uh, science and data as possible, and it's like the, the mask helps. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, I I, I use the mask when I'm around people. I just don't yeah. use it when I'm not near people. Yeah, and then but but then like when I surf or when I'm at the beach, I'm not wearing. No one's wearing a mask when they're surfing. But I, there's this ocean breeze. Surfing is well, sort of the perfect well, social. So if you had on a mask, wouldn't it be like waterboarding yourself? <laughs> yes. you just go with water well we what well, we in surf culture we call that catching a gitmo um <laughs> so yeah it would it would look weird if you had a mask on surfing and it's a kind of the perfect social distancing sport anyway because everyone's got these surfboards that are anywhere from six to nine feet long so you're at least 10 15 feet apart from each other when you're surfing so. Does this count as first world problems? I can't wear a mask while I'm surfing. <laughs> this is what like, do I do? This is why they looted Santa Monica because they yeah. heard conversations like this. They're like, okay, <laughs> asshole. We're I need a I need a mask with a straw opening for my twelve dollar green smoothie. <laughs> When I'm surfing my uh, low carbon footprint surfboard that I had handmade for me, um, should I have a mask on? All right, all right, Dick. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we 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 have it rough. So well, I don't know. You want to go? Who wants to go first? What do you want to do, buddy? Uh, sure, I, I'll dive in. Uh, so 
I'm, I'm giving away a little something here. This is this will probably be the not the next redacted tonight, but the one after that. I think uh, I've, I've started working on this this piece uh, about. So there's this insane story, right, about the, uh, the the Russian bounty for the Taliban to kill <laughs> American soldiers and your mainstream media and mm-hmm. your 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 you know your Don Lemons and your Wolf Blitzers and your Blanderson Poopers are running around going. Uh, the, the Russia paid Taliban to kill American soldiers. Now, I, let, let's throw some things out there that is, is not really my main point. But first of all, you don't need to pay the Taliban to try and kill American soldiers. All right. They just want to kill American soldiers. It's yeah. already yeah. happening for decades, literally decades. OK, point number two, America has been paying the Taliban to kill American soldiers. Right. We've been funding the Taliban for decades because we pay them to let our trucks go through the mountain passes and shit like that. Our contractors pay them. We bribe them. So really, we've been funding the Taliban and fighting the Taliban. So you could also have a you know a mind blowing report: America funding Taliban to kill Americans. But beyond all that, when I heard this story, and th- this is how our government works right now. This is how our, our mainstream establishment works right now. My thought was, okay, to drop a story like this must mean that there is some sort of threat of peace on the horizon, Mm -hmm. a threat of withdrawal of U.S. troops, a threat of peace somewhere. And that's the only reason you normally see a story like this where you're like, what the fuck? Uh, And so that's when I started looking for, well, what is the threat of peace that this propaganda is meant to stop? And all you have to do is look back in a few days and two major troop withdrawals that Trump has uh, talked about and, and told the, the Pentagon to, to begin. One, one is just kind of maybe a threat, but threatening to withdraw 10,000 troops from Germany, okay? That's one third of our Germany presence. And of course, that's kind of a right near closer to Russia. So, oh my God, we're not gonna have 35,000 troops in Germany to fight Russia. We'll only have 25,000 troops in Germany. It's, you know, and, People are flipping out. So that's one. Two is we, there, there was the threat of peace with Afghanistan, like that we might actually have peace in Afghanistan it was a real problem. And Trump was telling them to withdraw the troops from Afghanistan. And so we've seen this same pattern with other times. And look, I know I fucking hate Trump. Trump's a, a, a you know, I, I've said more positive things about the Skolex family of uh, tapeworms. OK, <laughs> I, I don't Which, like Donald Trump. Donald Trump is, is there's a handful of good things to say about that family of tapeworms. I mean, there's there's let's not let's not throw the I baby mean, out they, with the bathwater. They, they read more than Trump. So, I, <laughs> yeah, I, Absolutely. <laughs> But they keep you skinny. They keep you looking good. In LA, they're very popular. I'm on a tapeworm diet right now. That's uh, <laughs> I've eaten a bunch this morning. Uh, but so this is not a defense of Donald Trump. But at times, he goes against the military industrial complex and tries to create peace with a couple of countries. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's like North Korea, Syria, Afghanistan. He talked about withdrawing troops from Syria. And what happened? Within three days after he said, withdraw the troops from Syria, we see a chemical attack in Duma, right? Mm-hmm. And now we've seen the whistleblowers in the OPCW reveal that there was no chemical attack in Duma. But it succeeded, right? The propaganda succeeded. And this propaganda will probably also succeed. And by Duma, you that must be a city in Pennsylvania, right? Where the Philadelphia police just gassed people on a hilltop with a Black Lives Matter protest? Yeah. Or do I have yeah, to... Yeah, the chemical weapons attack, yes. And it was uh, kind of in the middle of the state, uh, Pennsylvania, by state college area. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, the, man, that's such a great point. And this is like, this is this is what government secrets is all about. Um, is it's we, we already know in the first episode, this is what it's all about. It's it's. Anytime there's a threat of peace, there's two things. There's two things that are going to ramp up war: the threat of peace, and somebody says they don't want to use the petrodollar. That's like, yep. man, yep. Are, you just put a bullseye on your forehead when you said that. And yep. this, I know this thing that like is such a great notion. Like the Taliban needed to be paid. <laughs> no, they were. They're pretty. They're they're a non for profit organization. They were just pretty good on uh, wanting to kill Americans. That was kind of their whole vibe. You didn't need Putin to come in, whether he did or didn't. It makes it somehow somehow like it's like it's like going up to the 
the guy sleeping with your wife and offering him money to sleep with your wife. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I, I already was doing it. Mean, you want to give me cash? Sure. But I was already doing it. Yeah. So now, we, now we're already humiliated by getting cheated on and we're paying the guy that's, that's banging our wives. So it's really, it's really twofold. I mean, there's so many things here too. Any, like part of it is they're probably going, oh, we're coming up on the 19th anniversary of the invasion of, of Afghanistan. And there's a lot of talk. I mean, what's happened in the last month of, uh, with the George Floyd protest is the, the defund the police. People have started to extend it to, yeah, and let's defund the military because yep. it's the same model, right? We spend too much uh, on our wars overseas and we oh, it's weird. We don't have money for Medicare for all. It's the same thing, you know, in our cities. We don't have money for homeless and, and good schools and, and drug treatment and housing and all this other stuff. But we got money for up armored vehicles and, and tear gas and rubber bullets and all right. that. By, 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 by spin too much, you mean astronomically too much. Yeah. You mean an amount of money no one can even comprehend. We're, you know, we, I, I, a lot of us that actually give a shit about, spending on military have, have for a long time we all quote the fact that the u.s spends more on military than the following it's like 10 countries combined but perhaps the more interesting fact is it's more than like 170 countries combined mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like it's like the bottom 170 countries of military spending we spend more than that because most countries just exist they don't need to kill everybody to feel good about themselves i know it's it's just like it's, it's a friend of mine was talking to somebody in, in like sweden and they were there was a comic they were over there visiting for a while and they were like you know they saw some business or something and they're like why don't they i mean it's a really good shop they should grow that and make a thing and then a chain and then the swedes went we don't need to take over the world like easy american <laughs> just like it's a fine little coffee shop there doesn't need to be a chain and a thing and then stock offering and a guy. just like and that's we, just we, we want we we've grown up in america thinking listen the goal is to be cancer okay just <laughs> Keep growing until you destroy the host. That is the goal of life. That's what we're supposed to do. If you don't, if you're not trying to dominate the entire planet, you are just a pussy. You're just a failure who has no goals in life. Like, and all these other countries are just like, I just want to have a nice life. I just want to. I, I, I really, I really just wanted my coffee shop. Was all. That's all I, I wanted. Uh, and going I back, I, I, I wanted to be able to go home and just like have a life when I'm home and like not plot world takeover. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I don't need more guns or a stock offering. I just kind of want to hang out <laughs> and have a good time. I don't need a 90 inch TV to, to go with my arsenal. And it's funny going back to Afghanistan. Like, so I've, I've went there on three different occasions as a stand up comic, right? Oh four, oh six, oh seven, and um, I'm sure you saw like the, uh, you know, like you were embedded with the really poor people in the in the back alleys, right? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I was with the United States military, and and you you see all the money, like to see the American war machine up close. And to see the whole, how the whole system works. So all these, and I was, I went between 2004 and 2012, I went seven. Were you, were you getting, so you were just saying you were getting paid like a million a show, like pallets of cash? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. No, we were not paid well. Halliburton was paid well. Um, <laughs> we just did it for the, the pat on the back and the job well done. Um, but you, you were sitting there watching pallets of shrink wrapped cash shrink wrap cash just go by you and like can we just have like just a just like a little bit of that can we just because it's right it's like right there like, should we share that money they're like shut up commie and then uh they punched <laughs> us in the stomach um yeah. but you saw the whole thing like you saw um these 20 somethings who especially when i started going back in like 07 08 and then i went to iraq in in uh, 08 and 2011 and, and Kuwait in 2012. The reenlistment, there's no jobs back where I live, so I took a $20,000 reenlistment bonus. So not only did you see, you saw the foreign and domestic empire at work. You saw there's no jobs or education for everybody in America, so they have, it's either Walmart or 
or you know uh d deal opioids you know <laughs> be a drug right. dealer or something right. and well, then now the, now the normal the normal career path for an american is walmart join the military back at walmart but angrier yeah yes and uh, higher higher rates of uh, suicide now that you have ptsd right. and so you saw the whole thing and you saw we spent all this money and all this stuff and i'm like and so after the, the the i was there when i was there in 04 so they had sort of like claimed victory over the Taliban and were like in the quote rebuilding stage and <laughs> in 04 yeah 16 oh. years ago they were like we did it we did we're it done. and I was talking to officers and stuff who were like oh we're starting to you know run security for schools because the Taliban was bombing girls school and we want we're building bridges and roads and infrastructure and then all the money got diverted to Iraq and you're like we <laughs> We should have, we we should be flying into Kabul as tourists now. The way we go into the Ho Chi Minh City, like it could have been, we could have helped rebuild the whole country. And and it's just, it's nineteen years. I mean, that literally the first time I went there was sixteen years ago. It's insane. It I I can't even. And and the fact yeah. that they're like still drumming up. It, I mean, honestly, it's just like Hollywood keeps there, making these remakes. In Afghanistan, there's soldiers in Afghanistan who were three when you were touring there. Yes, yeah, exactly. They were, like, they were, they were three years old. I mean, uh, it's it's unbelievable, and they we just keep Russia terrorism. It's like I feel like I'm watching the Fast and Furious franchise. Like, there's just another, <laughs> the same storyline, same actors. Vin Diesel walking around mumbling, going, hey, "We got to do it for family," <laughs> you know. Like, it's it never. No matter who, the, no matter which bad guy they catch, it just it all starts over again the next week. Yeah, because another bad guy's loose, and this guy's got a vendetta, and we got to get the cars together. And now these drag racers. It cool. turns out Al Qaeda has got an infinite number of number ones because we have killed probably a hundred Al Qaeda number ones. Oh, it, yeah. We always. I mean, I feel like I'm watching The Prisoner. Anyway, like that. I I don't know when the American people are going to wake up to this fact that we've been at this war for 19 years and we've spent trillions of dollars. Like, when is? Well, they, I mean, American people have to some extent, which is why Trump made all these promises his last campaign about ending the wars. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm going to not go into Syria. Terrible mistake to go into Syria. All that shit. And as I started this segment with, like, with some of these things, he has tried to do them, you know, not because he's a good guy, not because if you gave him a, a, a box of uh, baby kittens, he wouldn't <laughs> strangle them and have them for dinner, but because he wants to make his base happy and he thinks it'll look good on a, you know, on his legacy to say, I brought peace in Afghanistan or with mm -hmm. North Korea or whatever. Uh, this, he's not a peaceful guy. This is a guy who, who has bombed more than any president ever. I mean, at least the military under him. And, that, that's impressive because Obama bombed more than any president ever had, and Trump is now trying to top that. Uh, so it's not a it's not any peaceful, but he has tried, like with North Korea, to to get off of this nuclear stalemate, and he's been stopped every time. With North Korea, it was you know Bolton and Pompeo right. basically just walked in and and shat all over the the, the summit uh, to try and make sure there wouldn't be peace, and they succeeded. Um, and then you have, uh, you know, the propaganda by the New York Times, Washington Post, what have you, that was designed to also stop those summits. So, for example, the one I, I talk about, uh, I'll be talking about on Redacted tonight, is that immediately after the summit, because it was failed and they wanted to kind of drive the, the nail in the coffin and remind everyone that Kim Jong-un is a bloodthirsty dictator, no one you can have peace with, they reported all over the fucking place that he had had the nuclear talks uh, d d d d delegates, the main diplomat, he had had him executed, murdered, you know? I think mm. one of the articles said maybe he'd been right. like fed to alligators or dogs or some shit. And then a month later, this is the New York Times, said he killed, the, he executed the guy. And then a month later, we find out, oh, he's alive and well and walking around and there's photos of him. And the New York Times then reports, oh wait, he might be alive. 
and they never take down. To this day, you can go read the New York Times article about how he's been executed. <laughs> they don't even take down their shameless fuck face <laughs> fake news. I mean, it's it, it's like how wrong does a story have to be before you pull it down? Well, let's not split hairs between execute and walk through a park, Lee. Let's not get into a it's whole kind of a binary equation, you know, alive versus dead. There's not a wishy-washy area. <laughs> oh, you purists. You're with your purity tests of whether he's alive or dead, executed. <laughs> Come on. No, that's the I mean, the North Korea thing is so insane because they have back channeled North Korea has back channeled for peace. They have even flat out said we will gladly get rid of our nuclear program. If you just like meet us halfway and stop sanctioning us because there's the citizens are starving, you know, like they've said this on numerous occasions and we're like, nope, we need you as a bad guy. We yeah, need a right. country the size of, you, you know, whatever, New Jersey with one nuke to act like they're going to take over America. It's just nuts. And for, and for anyone uh, wondering why at least a large percentage of why the people of North Korea are starving. It is largely thanks to our economic war on them. Mm -hmm. And Rex Tillerson, when he was Secretary of State, I know it's tough to keep track of Trump's revolving cabinet because, you know, he, he fires one a day. But when Rex Tillerson was Secretary of State, he said publicly in like a, a forum, he said, we know our sanctions are working because North Korean fishermen are washing up in ghost ships dead on the coast of South Korea because they're fishing longer and longer into the winter because they have no food and then they die out there. And that proves to us, America, one of the richest countries in the world, that we're doing good. Wow. Are you fucking kidding me? Wow. Oh my God. I don't even have like a joke comparison for that. That's just pure evil. I mean, that's you just like- not. You should not have joke comparison. It's like, it's like, wow, good. We were killing poor fishermen. Man, that's yeah. really- like, Cause I, I, well, I've always felt, I mean, that's what my dad always said to me. He's like, you know, the fucking North Korean fishermen are coming for us one day. <laughs> yes, we got so it, it, listen, we're, we're getting them there. So we don't have to fight them here. Right. Because if they start fishing off of our waters, then all hell will break loose. If people can feed their families in poor third world countries, it's unreal. Graham, Graham it's all our waters. Okay. Ah, a boy. Now we're speaking. That's the freedom waters. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's... Listen, listen, we we claim the oceans, all right? We claimed it at least a couple of hundred years ago before there were humans. So, <laughs> well, the U.S. Navy is Amer as America's police department. So that's that's their literally their ad. America's no, ocean cops. You mean ocean cops? Ocean cops, yes. The ocean cops. The United you know, the ocean cops are fantastic. They're doing great work. Well, I want I have a thing that actually very much relates to um what you brought up when this just uh, came out that um a former George W. Bush administration launched a pro Biden super PAC. Oh yeah. And this is this is beautiful. Um, because Kumbaya. it's so, this is whenever you hear by bi bipartisan bend over cause it's coming hard. It's going to be, it, it, it is a strap on dildo of bipartisanry that's coming for you. So basically really, the, really, really it's, it's seven or eight dildos holding hands. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all, they're all working together. It's a dildos across America. It's really right. that uh, singing "We Are the World" as uh, they touch cocks across America. Yes, <laughs> we are the world. While you're being fisted by a seven prong dildo, we are the children. It's exciting. Um, yeah. So a bunch of uh, the group is dubbed uh, forty three alumni for Joe Biden. <laughs> it officially oh, launched God. today, July first, and. This you is, know, if there's one, if there's one group of people that I really trust, it's people who worked for George W. Bush. Well, look, Lee, it's we need to bring dignity to war criminals back to the White House, you know, because true, Trump true. is an undignified war criminal. Obama and George W. very dignified in their war criminality. Um, Absolutely, I'm trying to. I memory is very short here in America these days. Was was uh, George Bush? Was he uh, one of the, one of the good or bad presidents? Was he, <laughs> he do a good job or? Um, I, I think. Remember. Well, I think it was bad when he was in office, but now that Trump's here, he's friends with Michelle <laughs> Obama, so now we love him, right? That's what I was told. 
now that his main threat is painting things that are just fucking abortions, uh, we're that, that he's he's less dangerous now. Well, Ellen loves him, so if Ellen loves him, he must be soft. I mean, if a CIA really? asset. He's besties with Ellen. Yes, yes, absolutely. Anytime a CIA asset loves somebody, it's fantastic. <laughs> I thought you said CIA asshat, and I agree with that as well. That's the official demarcation, actually. If you if you go on Freedom of Information Act, it literally spells out CIA asshat. <laughs> so, yeah. This, but, but what is this? What, in your opinion, what does this say about uh, Joe Biden? That all the Bush people are are coming out and high fiving him. Well, he's the one that's going to save America. That's what it says to me, Lee. It says that he's <laughs> no. I mean, this. You know, he's been he's been working on saving America for forty years now. It just hasn't cl- quite clicked. <laughs> this to me just shows, and and all the neoliberals who are again, you and I are on the same page. Oh, I don't like Trump at all. He's awful. He's doing all this Nazi dog whistle, white supremacy, Second Amendment, which is which is legitimately scary. Like we're having black men being lynched in America in 2020. Like that just happened. So yes, he's awful. Yes, he's scary. But this this shows this notion. And I, and I said this all the, the, the entire time I've been I, I've been doing my show. I've, I've said all Trump has done is just been the least vulgar version of what presidents have done. And that seems to be what's so offensive to the establishment or to both parties is that Trump says, like, you're supposed to lie and smile and say uh, he's just like right. when I think they get mad when Trump's like, no, we're going to leave the troops in Syria to guard the oil. That's what we're supposed yeah, to do. Yeah, he's the America Inc. views him as a terrible CEO because he's revealed he's accidentally through a, com- a combination of his, you know, idiocy and narcissism. He's accidentally revealed how it all really works. Yeah, I know. And so they that what this is this it's it's the thing i believe noam chomsky said when he first won when trump first won even leading up to him getting sworn into office chomsky was like if he they'll impeach him within six months if he holds true his you know he as we talked about he ran on an anti-interventionist campaign in 2016 a very he ran on a very populist campaign yes it was it was xenophobic and racist and all that but he did say, I'm going to pull us out of all these wars. And that was a thing that did resonate with a lot of, of, of red state Americans whose many of them and their children were the ones that fought <laughs> in, right. in, in Iraq and Afghanistan. And had he stayed true to that promise of pulling everyone out of the wars, then they would have said, you know, the ruling class or whatever, the military industrial conflict would have said, you're gone. So, yep. and, and actually you, you can, so I only read, I, I should read more of it, just but it's tough to get through without a you know a vomit bag, and then you need a secondary vomit bag. But John Bolton's book, uh, a leaked version, is out online, and I read one chapter of it, and it really goes to show how Bolton and Pompeo, and it doesn't you know Bolton's not there anymore, but the characters don't really matter; they're all kind of similar. But Bolton and Pompeo and uh, are trying to push Trump into bombing like a, a really bombing syria like really yeah. really bombing syria like like uh, fucking syria the fuck up and trump won't isn't going for it like he doesn't he doesn't think that it's that it, you know he doesn't want to bomb that much uh and you know i he i'm not saying he has pure reasons whatever his reasons are but the people around trump do nothing but try and talk him into being more belligerent and more deadly and weirdly he at least with some countries not with iran and with palestine or things like that but with some countries he's the fucking dove in the room he's the one I know. who's like maybe we shouldn't bomb syria right now <laughs> which shows you how bad our political system is but but this 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 george w super PAC for biden actually it supports your conclusions from the you know taliban bounty thing on american soldiers which is He's talk. He, he. While Trump is a narcissist and a racist and out of his mind, he talks a little too much peace for a guy in charge of the American Empire for their taste. And to your point, uh, Pompeo and Bolton. I mean, a year ago were like war. We Iran. We got to. We you know they they did 
everything to to start to get a, a war with Iran. You know, we flew aircraft in their airspace. They shot it down. There was that everything going on in the Strait of Hormuz, which I nicknamed the false flag highway, was just anybody, just <laughs> right. We we we, uh, we flew a drone over their skies and they shot it down. And then we said, well, we own the sky. Yeah, so, <laughs> those are our skies. Oh, Iran in, 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 attacked one of our ships or a Japanese ship or whatever. It's like, no, we didn't. We didn't do any of that. Listen, you remember 1492, Columbus claimed the sky so blue. I mean, we all know. We, we all know. It's, so this just um, supports the fact because obviously, and if Biden were to become president, well, first of all, they'll stop blaming people like you and I, like you burn bros made Trump win again, which no, the Democratic <laughs> Party did. But when Biden wins again, I'm going to go, OK, all you when he won't defund the police, as he said, when he said, I'll, I'll teach cops to shoot him in the leg. He'll keep all these wars going, keep all this bombing going. We will go into war with Iran and Venezuela. I mean, no, no two ways about it. We'll probably invade North Korea. Are you then... I mean, the people that are okay with Biden are the same, some of them are the same lunatics who are like, believe all women unless they accuse Joe Biden or Bill Clinton, then maybe she's right. a little unstable. Right. <laughs> oh, well, well, actually speaking to what you're talking about, how, how, how terrible Biden would be for like Venezuela and stuff. Did you see he just today put out an ad or, or a day ago or something, put out an ad that it, first of all, it starts off with video is delayed, like a combination of Black Lives Matter protests and mm -hmm. uh, and COVID things as if just it's just a blur of video like shit's going down. And then at the end, a black screen and it says Fidel Castro, Maduro, Chavez, Trump. <sighs> Jesus. And his point is like Trump is an evil, awful dictator like Chavez or Fidel Castro. But what I took away from it was, hold on, Trump's going to give us free health care? <laughs> All those guys. <laughs> wait, oh. wait, Trump, Trump's going to give us guaranteed employment and end homelessness? All right, I kind of like this guy. Oh, He's going to, when he sells our oil, it's going to give it all to the people. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Also, you notice who Biden or the Biden campaign, let's be honest, Biden couldn't edit a commercial if he, you know, had it fucking plastered inside his eyelids. <laughs> uh, but uh, the, the Biden campaign, look at who they left off that list of horrible dictators. Bolsonaro, oh. Terrake, yeah. one of these, you know, fucking Saudi Arabia. No, just Castro, Maduro, Chavez. Yeah. None of the, all the dictators that wouldn't give us their oil or resources or strategic uh, geography. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the ones that Dude, let us countries. put bases. <laughs> so like, it's funny. So when I saw this, like George W, it just really, it's just more of the, um, it's just more of like, okay, Trump has, is he must be, he must be bad for business in some capacity. And it must be that he's not willing to just go to war morning, noon and night because, you know, Joe Biden has said he's going to find a middle ground. His climate policy will be middle ground, which will be so great. And uh, because <laughs> instead of, uh, you know, complete extinction event, event uh, wiping out the human beings by 2040, we'll get wiped out by like 2043. So that's like, that's exciting. Middle ground. And and I feel like, yeah, and I feel like we should make a clear point here. We're not saying Trump is, I, I know I already said this, but I feel like it needs saying, I know we spent a long time defending Trump in this episode. Trump is a goddamn catastrophe, all right? He's yeah. a fucking awful human being. There's a million things they could have impeached him for, like enriching himself with the presidency mm -hmm. or war crimes. There, there, there's so many things they could have impeached him for instead of the fake charades they have impeached him for or gone after him for because they don't want to go after him for things that democrats also do but you're absolutely right that like you have a choice between trump who acts like climate change isn't happening while arizona literally is like half on fire right now mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be monsoon season there this is supposed to be their rainy month and it's like right now arizona is just burning to the ground yeah it's it's insane the amount of fire going on there right now and so Trump doesn't believe climate change exists. And Biden just says, hey, I believe in climate change. Just not going to do shit about it. All right. Yeah. Like, those are your choice. The, those, it, the, these two old uh, rapists are uh, basically, this, this is the tip. This shows you what both parties really are. 
One just denies climate and the other one says, oh, we got to do something about climate, but not really. It's just like we're going to put a, you know, an eco label on a can of oil. And uh, that's what we're going to do. Um, <laughs> like, that, like that natural badge on food that means nothing. They're going to start putting those on cans of oil. <laughs> natural. Yeah. Okay. Natural right. or eco. They just put those on anything and we're like, oh, it's, oh. And I'm sure the people in the Middle East um, are going to be. Yeah, but it's going to say gluten free on our oil. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know Joe Biden's uh, rockets, probably like Obama's, will have rainbow flags on them. So the the people back in the Middle East will be like, "Oh, these bombs! We're finally back to normal. This is so this is so co- comforting." Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, take this in the name of gay marriage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So it, you know, if 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 there's a lot of crazy stuff that's going to happen. Well, and yeah, and I mean, th- this is why I talk a lot on, uh, you know, my show and things like that about like true change has to come outside of the electoral orbit. I mean, I'm not saying don't vote. I think everybody should vote just to try and swamp the amount that's stolen. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I believe in voting, uh, but I think that if you actually want to see real change, you're not going to get it from Biden. You're not going to get no. it from Trump. Uh, you, I, I think supporting third parties can be a useful pursuit, especially in lower level elections. But th- let's be honest, they're not going to change the country over the next 10 years. Uh, and so I think that true change is, is and, and true change and truly helping people. It's coming from other places. It's coming from mutual aid. It's coming from people standing up for their neighbors and, and things like that. Yeah, it's really uh, because the the j- just in this last month, right? Since the 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 George Floyd protests, I mean, we've seen like some significant change happen. Like, look at Seattle City Council. Look at Minneapolis's City Council. We're seeing, um, we're seeing some like real change at the city council level. You know, and shifted and then shifted the national conversation. This is the same success of Occupy that everyone wants to ignore because they want to say, you know, because the propaganda is Occupy failed. But it shifts the conversation in the country. Uh, And I think the conversation around police, at least to defunding the police, is uh, a very important shift. I mean, obviously, it's it's not over yet. It takes a lot of effort and a lot of organizing that, you know, is not my strong suit, that organizers are incredible. But so it's a long way to go. But to shift the, the conversation in this country from never question the police and over, you know, the span of three weeks, we shift to most people supporting defund the police. It's yeah. pretty incredible. It is incredible. And we're having real conversations and, and proposals of like, oh, so you want to get rid of the police? What's that going to look like? People are like, okay, so we'll cut the police budget in half. Like, like Los Angeles, um, we spend $3.1 billion, which is 54% of Los Angeles total operating budget, which is an obscene amount of money. So I always just say, just in general, just pick some round numbers. If we were to cut that budget in half, right, to like a million, a billion five, and we take that billion five that we cut from LAPD, and that gets put into homeless, it gets put into rent, it gets put into um, yep. uh, schooling, because we know like- uh, sco- By the way, decreases crime. Decreases crime. Of course, because and we we're, we're, we're the thing that's been so cr- critical in these last three four weeks is all this information is coming out in the internet of like oh black schools get fifty percent less money than white schools like just on a public school funding level well that's that's off so we could we could level that playing field which again which would yeah. lower crime and then as you and I have discussed um, on on my show of like there would be traffic officers that don't carry guns they would just pull you over. And because traffic yeah. laws are for our, yeah. our safety, they're just like. Love, so, so you, yeah, you're actually getting basically to my the, uh, one of the other stories I was going to bring up. Okay, which cool. Is the, which is the one billion dollars that uh, De Blasio said is going to be cut, or maybe they already voted on it. It's going to be cut from the NYPD. Uh, and uh, I'll have so, I want to say something else about that in a second. But I, I saw this clip on Fox News where they're you know trashing this they're like what are you going to do crime has has gone up and you you're defunding the cops you're a billion dollars less and it's like yeah but you aren't considering the fact that like 80 90% of what police do they should not be doing yeah. like it should be done by other mm-hmm. it should be done by mental health professionals 
and shit like that. Like, so yes, defund the police, put those funds into other types of, of, uh, you know, organizations and, 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 and jobs that can help deal with the problems of society rather than just the fucking steroidal maniacs with guns. That is not the only way to solve a problem. Well, it's like, that's such a great point because like I just know I mean I've talked to where I live Santa Monica I've talked to Santa Monica cops before and they're like the main thing we respond to is homeless a homeless yeah. person yeah. smashing something they're they're whatever they're suffering from some severe mental illness that they're they're you know self-medicating with street drugs and they're just they're just they're and a, a cop with a badge and a gun shouldn't be doing that they should only be responding to real crimes a break-in as armed robbery um you, you know uh, domestic- and even if it is a crime, but it's clear it's someone mentally ill, you know, like right. uh, like you said, someone smashing windows, but it's clear they're not with it. Uh, you don't send dudes with guns who have like zero training yeah. on how to deal with a, a mentally ill person. You send the people with a level of patience that I cannot fucking comprehend and they go deal with it. Yeah. I don't send me. Send the people that can deal with this yeah. shit. Yeah. And- and calm, talk and de-escalate the person. And the most that they maybe would have is like some non-lethal, like uh, something to, if the guy's- go- like, like like hairspray that they can spray in their eyes or something. <laughs> like, like, like whipped cream that fires really hard. Whipped cream. <laughs> like water balloons. You know what I mean? Yeah, something- Yeah, they, they have water balloons or- Soft or and like, fun. Uh, <laughs> like a, uh, like a porcupine that they can toss at them. Yes, yes, yes. Like a slip and slide. So they fall down and then they wrestle them and tie them their hands back or something like that. Um, um, but another point about this NYPD $1 billion, and here's the government secret portion of that, of that news story, is apparently half of it, so like $500 million, is actually just shifting uh, cops who are in schools in, in, in New York because they're currently getting paid out of the education, no, they're, they're currently getting paid. At, they w- they will get paid out of the education budget. So basically, half of this one billion is not actually getting cut from the NYPD. It's just shifting which area pays those school cops. And so now those school cops will be paid out of the education budget, thereby not actually cutting a billion dollars from the NYPD. Which, by the way, their budget is over six billion dollars. So. This is actually a $500 million cut and no one like that's the secret that they've hidden from people. Oh yeah. And they're doing the thing that, that I'm saying like uh, to, to all these defund the police activists and black lives matter and all these organizations that are working together, the DSA and code pink and everything, which is really, it's really cool to see. I go, don't settle for reform window dressing. Like, the mayor of Los Angeles said, we're going to cut LAPD's budget by $150 million. Well, that sounds like a lot of money to you and me. That's um, 5% uh, <laughs> of of LAPD's operating budget. What does that mean? I mean, just one less canister of tear gas to shoot at a pregnant woman or something? Like, what? what is that? Yeah, That's it, not it enough. Means, uh, it means the toilets at the police department are cleaned once less a week or something. They, yeah. They fire the janitor. <laughs> They got to they gotta go an extra three months. Uh, the tires on the up-armored vehicles don't get rotated as often. Um, yeah, the, 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 uh, the whiskey, the five whiskey drinks that they put on the, you know, business budget uh, <laughs> is now cut down to four a night. Wow. Well, that's going to really hurt the citizens of Los Angeles that these guys aren't whiskeyed up. It is. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, what if, do you want to do one more? Sure, we got five more minutes. We got five more minutes. Squeeze one in there, as they say on the set of some porns. <laughs> well, speaking of government secrets, and this is something I'll probably go into a little more detail on uh, on my show, but so this just came in today. A judge orders Virginia Jufri's lawyers to destroy their Jeffrey Epstein files. <laughs> <laughs> And this judge, uh, U.S. District Judge Loretta Preska, determined that attorneys for Epstein survivor Virginia Roberts Jufri had improperly gained access to many of those high prized documents. Yeah, man, that's wow. totally within reason that these documents that show the most powerful people in the world should be destroyed. This this judge is ox- operating on the honest of jurisprudence, wouldn't you say? This isn't, these aren't government secrets being scuttled. 
Is there any idea of what is on these documents? Um, you know, this is the stuff that uh, much of it was leaked last August. Um, and then completely unrelated, Jeffrey Epstein, the next morning, hung himself with a paper T-shirt and the video cameras <laughs> just happened to go broke. It's a weird coincidence. I don't get all conspiracy tinfoil hat on me. Yeah, my, my favorite part is that the two guards decided to snuggle up and take a nap together at the same time. Yes. And we're coming up on a year now. Those are the only two people that have been charged. <laughs> so really they were charged? the two guards who I think are uh, Gilligan and uh just these like zoink boink i I knew i man i said it last summer when they hey, arrested listen, him. they were just taking a three hour or two nap, uh, three it's hour just nap. like who was the oh just scooby and shaggy the guards zoinks, roo, roo, just couldn't keep an eye on the video camera um <laughs> so this judge too and i just did a little research on her there's a there's a website that is literally called patriot or traitor.com and they okay. it's i'm just it's a it's amazing the truth about who is a patriot or a traitor and i don't know the history of this website but they just went into her um loretta presca is a prime example of a tyrant whose function of the law is to keep those who hold power in power uh and they go into this case of jeremy hammond who um was it is a history of being a dissident and he uncovered some information and of course he's the uh, he's the stratford guy right yeah, he's the Stratford guy, and Judge uh, Loretta Preska's husband is involved in in Stratford. Like he's in some of these leaked documents, uh, and she came forward and you know blocked this guy or whatever. So this is like, this is how uh, the government secrets keep. This is how it happens when the most powerful people in the world. Like I was watching one of these true crime things. Um. That's on HBO and it's with Pat Oswald's um, uh, deceased wife, uh, Michelle McNamara, McNamara. Uh, yeah. And she was investigating for several years the, you know, the um, original Night Strang of the East Area, the East, what is it, the East Bay or East uh, EAR. Um, and watching that and I'm seeing how fascinating it is and they're, they're trying to, and they're talking to old investigators and, and everything like that. And this is why the Epstein thing, I think, is easier for people to just feel overwhelmed with having done so many videos and talked to so many people about it. Because the East Area Rapist, you, they still might find him. You know, I don't know. Maybe they already have. And I, I haven't watched this whole series, but like on HBO. It's going to be 23 and me, man. That's bringing down all the serial killers. <laughs> yes. We're going to find this one guy, it's right? not fair. You just click on that little green leaf and then you, you bring down your, your family member serial killer. Ancestry.com. Guilty. Um, <laughs> so, but the thing with the Epstein... I just wanted to find out if I was Native American and my, my dad's been arrested for 23 murders. <laughs> my, my uncle who lived in this cabin, I thought he was a nice guy. Turns out he's a monster. Um, but they're all looking for just this one one guy. And once we get him, then then those crimes can be solved and the victims can have, you know, what's horrible. But the Epstein thing, this is why it's been, been able to go on so long. I mean... Judges did this for him. Um, Acosta did this for him right. ten years ago in Florida, and, and and one of the and one of the key things that that is apparently not really discussed on these latest Epstein documentaries and in, in Netflix and mm -hmm. there's another one out there uh, is that Acosta said that he was that he was connected. He had to he had to give him the plea deal because he was connected to intelligence. Yo, oh, yeah, and Acosta actually publicly said that. And like that's left out of, of everything. Yeah. And it's and the, the I knew the Netflix thing. I haven't seen it yet. But from what I've heard from people within the like Epstein, you know, truth world is that I when I was like when I heard it was coming out, I'm like, I had no faith that it was it was like this is good. This is a professional whitewash because it's going to. Right. And I'm listening to some friends of mine who, you know, they're neoliberals. I love them, but they're neoliberals and they're not paying as much attention as we are. And they, the, I, when I hear, that's how I know how well the propaganda works. I talk to my neoliberal friends and they're like, yeah, but how could, how could Hillary have known, you know, like, 
I go, oh, so that was the that was the point of the Netflix doc is to um to to get people to go, right. oh. <laughs> Well, well, you know what? Yeah, you give you give people a bunch of salacious, scandalous information so that they're like horrified, which, you know, what Epstein did is horrifying. And they think, OK, I've learned it all. I mean, this is horrific. Right. But really what they've given you is all of those victims and everything talking about how awful Epstein was, what they went through, all this stuff. But they're leaving out the part where it goes beyond Epstein, where it. Uh, at least I hear they got into the uh, what's his name Wexner or whatever. Wes Wexner, yeah. Uh, so they get they get into some other characters, but they don't get in to like to uh, how he might have been connected to intelligence. They don't get into Israeli <laughs> intelligence. They don't get into uh, you know. So so they have a clear kind of cutoff point where it's like we'll give them all of this horrifying shit and we'll just stop right before we get to, oh yeah he worked with the CIA yeah oh <laughs> and even less wexner so maria farmer um who d is a epstein victim and she's been very public about this and she did an extensive interview with whitney webb whitney gave me i had whitney on the show to talk about it i even played some of that interview she said less wexner is the head of the snake the head of the sex trafficking snake for north america the Netflix doc didn't even go into that at all. They're just like, maybe Les Wexner. Like, they didn't go, oh, no, he was using Victoria's Secret as a recruiting tool. And that, that, that really is not much of a cover, Victoria's Secret. Yeah. You know, if I were, if I were involved in a sex ring, I, I would have been the CEO of, like, an accounting firm. Right. You know, like. Well, that's the thing that's so, that's what's so, that's why they're so brazen and why they're able to get a lot. And it's been, a, it'll be a year. It's been a year. Well, and it, that, yeah, it actually does make sense because he can because he can he has a justifiable reason to explain why he was meeting with a yeah. you know fourteen year old uh, girl yeah. model. You know, oh, alone. we when and and this is how we do the modeling business. We have our female recruits go out and find these young women to once they turn eighteen. And yeah. that's what Jalene Maxwell and all of them were doing. They were yeah. and and Virginia Roberts even said Jalene Maxwell was a. Uh, participated in it and and there's no mention of oh why was maxwell at chelsea clinton's wedding like two years after she settled out of court with virginia roberts like none of that is yeah. covered it's yeah. it's like the the clintons were at his compound in new mexico numerous times like none of that they just it's like it's like Dude, weinstein the, the 26 flights oh god <laughs> on the jet you know like several i covered epstein four years before he was right well before it before it became a national story now i obviously was not the first i was covering it because that florida reporter had done something about it mm -hmm. and then uh and then it got in some right-wing magazines or something uh so but i covered it before trump was ever elected and i only did one thing on it but i was like Bill Clinton rode on this jet 26 times and got rid of his security for like four or five of them, which a president is never supposed to do. Is that not a red alert bell right there? Like, uh, so insane. I interviewed a friend of mine who was, he's a retired cop. He was a child crimes investigator for Phoenix PD. He was on my show last summer. And I said, I go, just as an investigator, I, I just was like, just hypothetically, let's say you had a guy who said he was only on a plane four times, but flight log said 26 times. What would you look at that guy in a scale of one to 10 in terms of guilty? And he just starts laughing. He goes, well, that's just a clear, that's when you know you got a guy. Like just rudimentary detective work is like, mm, this guy's guilty. So it's, They've got to everybody. These judges do this. The media, when they cover it, you know, like the Netflix thing, I'm glad the victims got a voice, but then they yeah. only cover part of it. And that's and that's the thing, actually, uh, Maria Farmer said in her three hour some interview with Whitney Webb of like, that's part of it. She told all this stuff to the media and then they'll just talk about some of it. Like even... Yeah debating did Debstein kill himself or was he extracted she goes even that debate is part of the distraction so now we're not talking about everyone in this black book we're just right, talking right. about did he did he not you know what I mean uh, uh what was I say oh uh we'll, we'll we'll make this the last little bit because uh we, we should wrap it up but uh have you looked into or, or talked about uh 
Bob Fedrakis uh, and what he discovered in Ohio in like the 90s. I've heard a little uh, bit about this guy, but not all the way. What is it? So, so, so Bob Fedrakis is uh, he's a great he's actually does election fraud stuff, election integrity stuff. And so I've had him on my show. Always, all, all we've ever talked about is election fraud, election integrity stuff. Uh, he has a new book out on that thing, uh, on that subject. But I saw him uh, not too long ago, and he uh, he said, "Yeah, you know, I covered Epstein in the early '90s," and I was oh. like, "What?" And he's like, "Yeah, no one. He, I didn't know he was anything. He just there was this." Uh, not Epstein was the like junior assistant or whatever, uh, or the, the second, the second in line of this airline company that just showed up in Ohio oh. and was doing flights to Ohio. And he, he, he knows the name. I can't remember the name of the airline company. They're not around anymore, but, and I looked into them and I wrote for a small Ohio newspaper about this company had shady ties and how they were connected to the CIA and, uh, you know, maybe connected to, to drug mafia kingpins. And so I wrote this thing and there was this guy Epstein who wasn't a huge part of the story, but he was part of it. And uh, yeah, so he was running a like CIA connected airline out of Ohio in the early 90s. Well, that's the thing too. And this is why, so I remember Whitney Webb went really deep on this. And so she found that Ohio, that's Les Wexner's area. So that's why it, it's connected to Les Wexner. He has hospitals named after him. That's where he operates out. That was the compound that Maria Farmer was literally held captive at. And I believe Whitney Webb found connections that it might have been through this Bob Frackis guy of the airport in Arkansas that was then also that the Clintons had control over that would then fly into Ohio. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. Huh. It's this web, man. It, it, it connects the whole, it just shows you like, oh, that's right. The billionaire ruling class is pure evil. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, well, this is the part of the, the podcast where I let everyone know, I promise you every ep episode will not just become Epstein. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not going to, it'll be, it'll be 17% Epstein stuff. The, the, it'll be hard to do government secrets without some sort of weaving in of that but um but yeah we always will i'm sure the cia will get mentioned every episode they, they always say if you're at a party with grant do not bring up don't, don't. The, the end of the touch <laughs> don't just everybody's eyes glaze over oh no here goes graham oh, they did it they pulled oh. the string on his back. Oh, God. We should have just asked him about surfing. That would have been easier to, to pretend we cared about. Um. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't I, I don't know how to wrap this up, but I think we should wrap it up. Uh, if people are listening to the podcast version of this, uh, thank you, guys, and please share it. And, and let us know if you like it, because uh, then we might keep doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Government <laughs> Secrets Episode 1. Government Secrets Episode 1, and uh, all my stuff is at LeeCamp.com, and people can watch my free comedy special at LeeCampAmerican.com, or grab my book at LeeCamp.com. Yeah, and uh, everybody out there listening, uh, you can go to GrahamElwood.com, you can, my uh, YouTube show, Political Vigilante is there, uh, follow me at Graham Elwood on my social media, and, uh, you know, my website, I would say that's where the tour dates are, but those don't exist anymore. <laughs> thanks to, thanks yeah, to a uh, pandemic that was uh, leaked out of Fort Detrick. That's another episode. Um, <laughs> <laughs> teaser for episode two. <laughs> uh, yeah, so go to GrahamElwood.com and we're gonna we'll keep doing government secrets with uh, with Graham with Lee Camp and Graham Elwood. Sounds good, man. All right, stay safe, citizens. <laughs> keep fighting, everybody. Everybody, like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell notification button and the subscribe button, even if you've done it before because they're unsubscribing, many of you, every day. Watch the ads all the way through. If you click skip ad, I don't get paid. Also, support us at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood or rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. Rockfin.com is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. All my videos are on Rockfin ad free. Thanks for watching.